Hello, today's In the Hoop project is this peacock feather key fob. It includes a slot kind of hidden in part of the feather that you can put a quarter in. Actually, this key fob is probably just about big enough you could even put a key in there if you want it. So, our peacock quarter holding key fob. So, as usual, we always start with our layout guide. It's going to tell you what's going on in each run, where you need what, what each run is, and where you need to take some actions. Real handy to keep by your machine while you're embroidering. Your instructions will give you your process overview, your file name, your materials required, some tips, and then detailed stitching instructions with some little check boxes so you can keep track of where you are. For materials, we've got a three inch by five and a quarter inch piece of vinyl for the front, a three inch by three and three quarters for the back. Actually, this might be a little bigger just because that was happened to be what I had left on that piece. Keyring, of course, uh, scissors for trimming the edge, scissors for trimming the buttonhole. Now, for this one, I actually like to use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, something like that. Uh, some kind of razor blade for cutting, uh, starting that buttonhole. This curves a little steep. I found that the my rotary cutter uh, can end up cutting the buttonhole. Temporary 50 adhesive spray or 505 is my favorite brand. And I'll have plain tearaway stabilizer in the hoop already. Uh, this is just plain, no fusible, no nothing. And I also like to keep a little dot of tape on my side of my hoop to help me keep track of which way it goes in and out of my machine. So we're going to pop this in our machine and we're going to go ahead and go into edit mode. Uh, if you've got a multi-needle, it's helpful to do this. You can add some stops uh, so that it'll stop when you for the runs where you need to take action. So you can bring over your thread guide and set those as needed. So we're going to go ahead and get start sewing here. It's going to sew a placement line for us, and then we will stop to put our vinyl down. Thank you, sweetheart. Our design has finished stitching. You can see the placement there. Now that line is going to be our fold line to help you know where to fold that loop. In order to achieve the streamlined narrow loop here, this loop is stitched in place as part of the process of the design, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. So I'm going to take my fabric. I already sprayed a little 505 on the back of this, and I'm simply going to lay that over these stitches. Now this is a little narrower. This is probably actually about two and a half inches wide, and uh, but I happen to have that and I wanted to try and squeeze it out. I hate to waste fine also, but it makes it real narrow when you do that. You don't have a lot of spare room. Now you can just see those stitches right there and I can just see a little bit of fabric around them. So that should be okay. Actually, I should probably move it that way a little bit, but we'll not worry about it. So I'm going to put this back in the hoop. It's going to secure this in place and then it's going to stitch the details of the feather and the buttonhole, etc. And then it'll stop after it's finished stitching the eye before we stitch the last run. All right, the design and the buttonhole is finished stitching. We're ready. The la next run is putting the backing on. So we're going to move this over to our work surface. Now, I found the best way for opening up this buttonhole is to take a box cutter or blade and just make a small slit. Be careful not to cut your buttonhole stitching. If you do cut your buttonhole stitching before you do anything else, put it back on the machine. The buttonhole is at the start of run number three, so go back to there, restitch your buttonhole, stop it, you know, advance the stitches, and come back here. So, since we've got that started, oops, I thought we did. Let me try cutting that again. I must not have cut deep enough. I think that's a little better. So, I'm just going to cut the buttonhole open, get my scissors in there, 
and actually that's, curved scissors are great because you can kind of turn them around and kind of curve to the left or the right and just very gently snip around that circle till you get that all open. Then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I want to cut basically above here uh, so that that loop section So we're just going to kind of do that. We'll finish it off with the uh, scissors. So you just kind of cut as much or as best as you can with the rotary cutter, get it started, and then we can come here and finish cutting that those edges there and get the, that loop section free. Now I'm going to take and just cut reasonably close, oh, just, you know, a little bit of a border, but, you know, fairly close to that top edge there. Clean that off. And then I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to trim any stray threads off the back, because it's hard to trim those once you put the backing on. And then I'm going to fold this. So that line that we stitched in there before when we did that original placement, that's our fold line, the one that's kind of perpendicular to the stem. So I'm just going to start a fold right across there. And I want to match up as I'm folding the, the stitches here with the edges there. So I just want to make sure they're matching up. And that's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a I've got this piece of paper that I've just cut a little hole in, and that allows me to spray the 505 without getting it all over everything. So I don't want to go up too high there or I'll spray it closed. So I'm going to put it so that just a little bit of that is, is showing there. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick, quick, quick spritz of the 505. And then I'm going to go back and fold this again. Looks like I keep my edges matching up. So we're going to just fold that there, and then we're going to take our back fabric, and we're going to just make sure that's up over top of that, and just lay that down. And I'm going to lift it up a little just to check, check my placement from side to side. And again, this is a little narrower. I only cut about two and a half inches. That's why I recommend you use three inches. So press gently, turn it over, press firmly. If I press firmly the other way, I'm going to pop through the stabilizer. So, uh, and you don't want too much 505, it'll be hard to open your buttonhole. So we've got this on, we're going to return this to our machine. And actually, I'm going to change the bobbin thread. I want to use black bobbin thread. It'll look a little nicer on that black vinyl. So I've just got some black bobbin thread here. And we'll put that in. So I've got my black bobbin thread in there. I can put my design back in. As always, make sure you pay attention to the orientation of your design. And make sure when you're sliding this in that that vinyl on the underside of the hoop doesn't get knocked out of place. So we'll just double check that that looks good. And we'll go ahead and finish this last run, which will secure the front and back together. Thank you, sweetheart. Our design has finished stitching. We can take our hoop out of the machine. At this point, since everything's been all stitched and finished, we can go ahead and unhoop our design. And now if you noticed, here's where I'd used a, the, forgot to change the bobbin thread. So the black bobbin thread, you can see, is much nicer. It gives a much cleaner finish on the back than that white bobbin thread does. So at this point, we can go ahead and stitch. I'm going to start by cutting the top off there. And then I, I like my larger scissors for this. You can make longer cuts. Just going to kind of cut around the edge there. 
and then down and we'll kind of turn things and come up with that next edge. So these do require a little trimming. If you wanted to, you could just kind of do a straight trim around those edges instead of doing this. And I usually, like I said, after I cut those things, I cut off those sharp points. And we're just going to continue trimming around those edges. So you can cut them before or after, it doesn't really matter. And we're almost there. So we're just finished trimming up and over there. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the back and oops, we're going to get that, trim away some of that green excess. And just kind of take our scissors and just kind of cut. There's a little bit of a curved line there. So we're just going to follow that a little bit, make sure that's cleaned up. And the only thing left to do is to put our key ring on. I find it helpful to sometimes have my little screwdriver handy to get in there, especially if you use too much 505. There we go. So you can get him in there and make sure that that loop is open. You can also use him to make sure that the inside of the quarter area is open. Then I'll take this guy and just use him to split the ring open. It makes it a little easier to slide that in there and just slide the key ring around. Then sometimes I usually come back to the other side and that way I can just push it around. And voila, we've got our peacock quarter holding key fob all completed. I hope you've enjoyed today's design. If so, please like and share. Please subscribe to this channel for more embroidery projects and embroidery basics with LLH Embroidery. Thanks and happy stitching.